want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Hello YouTube, Steve-O Trucker here. Turn left. Don't mind the sat nav, we'll turn him right down. It's actually decided to work now. Um, today we're going to be talking about professional etiquette as a truck driver. So, uh, truck driving etiquette. And what do I mean by etiquette, you say? But it's a mixture of things between professionalism being courteous and what else and common sense it's more the pillars of being a professional driver it's one of many pillars but it's more the critical pillars get slightly overlooked and you'll learn a lot of etiquette as you go along in trucking and just as a cover note if you're an experienced driver, I am probably taking to suck eggs here a wee bit, so I do apologise. Also, I'm not going to cover every etiquette as a truck driver. It's stuff you pick up, you know, still stuff I learn. Go, actually, that's a better way of doing it. And let's get started off with etiquette. Let's start at the fuel pumps, because this is probably one of the most common areas that causes frustration amongst us professional drivers is when people take brakes on fuel pumps that is not proper etiquette or professionalism don't take brakes on fuel pumps fair enough if you're fueling up no dramas there and I have no issue with people, say like at a small garage, you can only stop at the pumps anyway, of stopping at the pumps to quickly nip in to grab a newspaper, a brew, whatever, as long as you're quick and you're not dawdling about it. That's fine. But if you're doing a 15, 30, 45, and trust me, I've been stuck behind people doing a 30 minute break. No, not even after fuel. It's mind-boggling. The other bit of etiquette at the fuel pumps is on sites where you can do this. You can't do this on every site. But if the space after you fueled up is to pull forward, if there's enough space past the pumps you need to pull forward, do so. Laying any other vehicles behind you to pull onto the pump. Another good bit of etiquette there. Sadly, it gets overlooked sometimes for some drivers. I've no idea why, it just does. Uh, other, anything else with that? Yeah, it's just, a lot of it's just really common sense stuff, really, when you start thinking about it. Like with, let's go on to parking into laybys. Park as far forward in laybys as you safely can do, as tight up as you can as well. Push your mirrors in. That would be a good bit of etiquette as well to practice, and certainly in laybys, to allow the tr any vehicles to exit. You know, if they want to leave before you do, they can do. Uh, it saves your mirrors getting whacked as well. That saves your make. Uh, other bits of etiquette is with overtaking. And I'm going to go if you're being overtaken. So, say you're on lane one, Joe Bloggs and another truck or whatever is overtaking you. Another slower vehicle. So, you only maybe one or two mile an hour difference, maybe, depending on what truck you're driving, if it's limited, you know, on other factors as well. But is A, maybe drop a couple mile an hour on your spe speed a little bit, either on your cruise or just drop one or two mile an hour. Not a huge amount, just enough to allow them to overtake a bit quicker. And when they are safely cleared past you, then flash them in. Don't feel forced that you've got to give them a straight flash. 
but try and flash them in where possible. Only if it's safe to do so. I must add. So a bit of common sense. Don't flash them if they haven't cleared your truck. Because if they pull in, they say, oh, you flashed me, you're slightly liable then. You're not meant to flash, but it's professional courtesy. Um, and if you're the truck overtaking, it's only overtake if you know you're f A, faster. So I'm just uh, letting, as you can see, this traffic go, which is a bit more courtesy. Just let people go. Plan ahead as well, so look ahead, see if anything's coming, there's a car coming. You know, it's not a, shouldn't be a drama. He, of course, they slow down and stop on the corner. But it is what it is. But yeah, so if you're overtaking, you know, know that you you are faster. Because I've seen circumstances where trucks have gone to overtake straight after a roundabout another truck. And I think it's gone out of their head that, yes, that truck might be initially slower, but it may be faster, if that makes any sense. So e.g. it's maybe fully loaded, but it's a more powerful truck. It's not as limited as your truck, maybe, or, you know. And then you get the situation of <laughs> they're either neutral out on each other, which means they're beside each other, and they're not really gaining or, you know, and somebody has to make a call where if the truck on the inside has any sense, they're knocked down a few and let them get past and sort it out after. As I say, so that's another thing bear in mind with overtaking is to know that you can safely overtake and get past them safely, reasonably. There's no time to do it, it takes a while in this truck, so don't feel too embarrassed if you overtake, it's taking a little while. It sometimes does, because not every driver does drop that one or two mile now off or over. So, try and get used to the length of your vehicles well in this. Hopefully, if they're being professional about it, they'll flash you in. If they do flash you in, you know, give them a good thank you. It's courteous to give them a wink on the indicators or a quick flash of the hazards to say thank you. So, remember to be polite. And that's probably about it with overtaking. There is a lot more to it in the etiquette side of overtaking. Um, there's a lot more ed etiquette as well, like there'll be site etiquette as well. So some sites expect you to do certain things a certain way, to others you'll learn that as you go. I'm not going to teach you site etiquette as I would call it, because that could vary wherever you're at, wherever you go. This, as I say, is general professional etiquette when you're out on the road. Going back to parking in truck stops, make sure you're in your bay, you're not hogging the bay. This leads me on to if you do fridge work now. And, the, you know, if you have a noisy load, etc, etc, like animals or fridges, try and park either in the dedicated areas and truck stops or as far as you can away from the other trucks, if that is possible. Doesn't mean you can't park in a truck, any truck stop, you can do, but it's just about being considerate of where you choose to park. If you can't, if you have no options, you have no options, you have to take what you can get. And it is kind of always tough luck scenarios to wherever you park next door to then. But do your best to mitigate. It's just, you know, it's just professional courtesy at the end of the day and it's good etiquette to do. Anything else on the etiquette side? I mean, there is probably other things I have missed. And as I said, there is a lot more to the etiquette side as well. We could go on all day with the etiquette, but those are generally the big things. So like, when you, if you're pumped, be aware what you're doing at the fuel pump. So don't take your time. If you do your fueling up, pay for your fuel, get what you need and go. Don't then just sit behind your seeing wheel having your brew 
reading the newspaper and wondering why there's three or four other truck truckers behind you who've got their angry faces <laughs> or giving the tap on the wrist <laughs> you know hurry up <laughs> nothing worse and it tends to be a mistake by newer drivers but equally there is some drivers who know what they're doing who do it no excuse then if you're a new driver you know it, it's something to learn and you may you may have to learn the hard way sometimes but hopefully you see this video and you go actually I won't do that again you know you know we've all crossed the etiquette sometime you know no one's perfect It's more the pillars that you try, you know, you try your best to stick to. Because at the end of the day, if you're driving as professional and having good etiquette, it only aids you at the end of the day. It only benefits you. That lay by there. You know, it only benefits you in the long term, makes you a more professional driver. It's not a competition who's better than who, it's about just being professional. And as I said, I still learn stuff, and I always treat every day as a school day. You know, you can improve yourself, be better at your etiquette. You know, there's areas that I go, actually, I could do better with that. You know, how I go about that. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, so it's more aimed for the newer drivers, or the drivers who are getting into trucking, and this doesn't really, the etiquette doesn't really matter if you're on a rigid, or if you're in a class one, you know, and even to some degree, when you're in your car. And you'll pick the etiquette as you go along, but hopefully this video will be fairly, reasonably informative about etiquette as a heavy, heavy goods driver you know, or truck driver in other words because there is truck drivers who just don't follow the etiquette whatsoever who knows what the reasons are for doing so just don't become that driver I say it's an easy job to do but it's at the same time it's a hard job to do because you've got a lot of boxes to tick you know and etiquette can seem like another hindrance but actually it's not it also can aid you and benefit you in the long run it can make some situations slightly less stressful you know and helpful in most accounts hopefully the camera is okay i've just said to reset my filming location not hugely it's just because i've uh, reset after my holiday so there may be some tinkering that needs to go on. Uh, anything else to mention with etiquette? Nothing else really. Um, just a bit of update on the channel. There's some more content coming. This is just a, what these videos are for. Actually, that's something that needs to be talked about. It's etiquette. Because it is an area that does get, as I said, neglected. If I was aware the evidence was going on the other side. But we didn't have to do any action because it was all clear for them. So, yeah. Um, anything else? Nothing really. As I said, there's more videos to come. I do have, as I said, I do actually have a plan, other planned video that I have filmed. I still need to go through it though see if we're all good with it aside from that hopefully you've enjoyed this video please check out my facebook and mainly my instagrams i'm more active on my instagram uh anything else if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed please smash that big subscribe button it does help the channel out and hit that like button and feel free to comment down below what do you think about trucking etiquette? You know, have I missed a key pillow out? I probably have. No doubt I have. I'll probably think after this video, what about that? <laughs> I should have mentioned about that. But you get the gist, hopefully, without me going too much on about it. 
Um, anything else to add? Nothing really, but I would like to say it yet again, as I say in all my videos, a big massive thank you to all my subscribers. And, you know, if you want to shout out or anything like that, please, you know, leave it down below in the comments. So, look, I want to shout out, you know. If that is the case, I'll do my best to put it on the next video I film after I see that. If I forget, mention in, in future content as well, so that you haven't given me a shout out. <laughs> But also, I do. I am going to do a video to shout out some new vloggers out there as well. I know I'm smaller than even they are, which is interesting. But never mind. It's probably my fault somewhere. Who knows? But we're getting there. But yet again, thank you very much to everybody who watches the channel. I will catch you in the next one. Over and out.